Zion Ministries, this is Evangelist Christian with you, back again for another exciting message. I want to get straight into this and share what Yeshua said uh, of himself in the book of Luke. And let's get straight into the message because I want to be an encouragement to you that when Christ came, it was Jubilee, something that they practiced or honored, I would say and kept as a godly custom uh, in the Old Testament. And I wanna go ahead and explain what that looks like for me and you today. Let's go ahead and get, hello, Miss Jackie. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get right into Luke chapter four, verse 16 through 30 right now. And once again, keep in mind that he is actually speaking of the festival of Jubilee and I'll explain what that is in a second so let's go ahead and read this it says so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of Adonai here, this uses the Lord, but I like to use the real names. The Spirit of Adonai is upon me, because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, and to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hello, Patrick. Hello, everyone joining. God bless you. Verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of Adonai. That's key to proclaim the acceptable year because he chose this spot in purpose because he knew that his he knew what his audience knew what his audience knew is that they were looking for freedom and that's what the acceptable year of the Lord of Adonai is especially as I will explain it more physic more fully what it was physically and then we'll come back to the point that he was also speaking in reverence to spiritual jubilee freedom in the sense of sin the debt of sin verse 20 then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all were who were in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing so all bore witness to him and marveled at the great gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is this not the son of Joseph he said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavenlies were shut up three years and six months. And there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sedan, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them were cleansed or healed except that of Naaman the Syrian. So all of those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and then they led them to the brow of a hill of the city which was built, that they might throw him down off of the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. They were trying to kill him, but it wasn't his time, and he easily escaped because he's, he's, he's Yah in the flesh. He's God in the flesh. So I'm going to explain more of Jubilee in a moment because we're going to go into the Old Testament but as we look at the scripture, it's important to confirm that his people did not understand the scriptures themselves because he actually wasn't speaking on his own accord. He opened up the, the Isaiah scroll. I don't know if they had chapters back then, but he found exactly where he wanted to read. And not only found that, he found where it was speaking of himself. So, anyhow, hello everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, 
they didn't quite understand what he was speaking because he was also speaking of a spiritual concept not just a physical concept of Jubilee which was the forgiveness of debt physical debt but before once again I get into that explaining of the Jubilee here he's very very clear that this scripture he, we already know what he's saying I know I would have known what he's saying by saying this is that he is quoting Isaiah 61 if you look back at that that's a reference to the coming Messiah and people did not like that he was saying that of himself and what he was confirming is very interesting I guess you would call it mystical uh, it's spiritual for sure but what he's saying here is a prophet and he's more than a prophet he's our Savior he's our Messiah is never accepted in his own country I mean there is but it's not like there is when they are sent out of the land and that's what he was explaining about the widow and um, the widow and someone else who was cleansed they were not in Israel they were out of the country they accepted their blessing it's a paradox I, I guess you would say where people are rejected and God is rejected he is accepted in other places and they receive their miracle and so what I wanted to to explain what I wanted to get to is that the scripture I believe is in Hosea 4 6 we don't have to, um, we don't have to turn there but Hosea says it very clear it says that my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge they say that my people are destroyed it says because of lack of revelation not understanding the scriptures they knew the scripture here they didn't know the scripture not only here but in the spirit of its real meaning because the Word of God is alive sharper than any two-edged sword so what happens when we are closed off to God's revelation to us and teaching and thinking just the small amount that we have it will never open up and blossom until the full understanding of what that means he's saying that Isaiah 61 is pertaining to Jubilee which is himself but what they were missing is that they needed spiritual forgiveness of their spiritual debt they only understood physical debt that's all they understood physical debt even to the point when we don't have correct revelation and understanding it even hardens our heart and they even tried to kill him not only will he be rejected not only will you reject your blessing when we don't have revelation and understanding you'll try to kill the very thing that God's trying to bless you with and this is God in the flesh his son and if it happened to him a student a disciple is no greater than his master I'm not saying we're all going to be try to be killed but we're going to be rejected in some form or way his rejected his rejection ultimately took him to the cross hello thank you for joining his rejection ultimately took him to the cross it just wasn't his time yet as they try to push him over the cliff it was not his time and they were like frozen bound basically the demons that were controlling them were bound by the anointing is what happened and they couldn't execute what they were trying to do because of the authority that was in him until he laid down his life until he decided to and later on that takes place so it's very exciting that he's saying the spirit of Adonai is upon me because he's appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of the sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed Christ came to set the captives free to break people free from the prison sentence the wickedness that Satan has brought mankind under because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God not just some people all have sinned some jump farther and it looks like they could get there but perfection uh, the only way into, into the kingdom of heaven is cleansing 
and perfection in Christ. And he, he imputes that righteousness unto us and forgives us through his shed blood. So they didn't quite understand that, but he was bridging the understanding with the concept of Jubilee, which we're going to uh, speak about here in a second. The, the, the main reason why Christ came to save souls is to set the captives free to preach the gospel to the poor where they're being afflicted and sentenced by the devil to destroy them where their their people are experiencing those afflictions in the earth it's because Satan has sentenced them to destroy them to make them bitter against their Creator to make them bitter against Yeshua so they ultimately end up in the same place as the devil one day but he came to break chains Yeshua's job is a chain breaker whether it's in health whether it's in your destiny whether it's in your finances wherever the devil has sentenced you Christ came to undo the sentence to overrule which I've spoken in further uh, videos he came to overrule where the devil is afflicting you. And the best way to do that, even though it could be done without faith as we pray for others in our lives, is having a relationship with Christ Yeshua. Because he purchased your salvation at the cross of Calvary for all of mankind. And why was it purchased for all of mankind? Because we were all in the loins of Adam and Eve. Just like a tree, I'm looking at a tree outside my, my car or the tree that's outside your door. If that tree falls over and dies, the future generations of that tree, as long as we're on this earth, will die. You see, we were in the loins, just like the seeds of that tree or that plant outside your house. We were in the loins, me and you watching right now, and all of the Old Testament people and all the people that'll be born tomorrow, were in the loins of Adam and Eve. So when Christ went to the cross, he reversed the curse for the whole seed race of mankind. And that's why it's all purchased for everyone to come to him. But he doesn't force himself on anyone. But it's by choice that you confess and repent your sin and you, you come to him. So the good news is that he came to break the chains and set the captives free. But the, the main one of the main scriptures that he used was to trigger their understanding of Jubilee. Jubilee, besides the seven feasts that they were to keep on the, you know, in the scriptures, not the ones we have today, the ones that are in the Bible, out of the seven feasts, on top of that, people were excited about Jubilee. They were excited to keep it because it was a time of freedom and cancellation of physical debt, which we're going to get right into right now. He's using Verse 19, the acceptable year of the Lord of Adonai was a trigger. It was a trigger they knew right away. They might have not understood how that relates to them exactly besides physical debt. He used the same term that people were familiar with. The acceptable year of Adonai is when land went back to Yahuwah every seven years. I'm going to explain some things that maybe you've never heard of or understood. I've definitely read it, but maybe forgot about it as I come back and read through the scriptures over and over. But Jubilee was to be counted in sevens. Seven times seven. Seven sevens, which was 49, Jubilee hand landed on the 50th year. So let's go ahead and read about that now, of what he's talking about. They know he's referencing Jubilee. Not only Isaiah, which he read out of, but Jubilee in the Old Testament, which is a forgiveness of debt. So let's go in and read that. And there's going to be some fascinating things. And let me tell you something before we keep getting go going, as you can see, excitement in me. Um, no one is more generous, loving, and compassionate than our God, than Elohim, than Yahuwah, and Christ Yeshua. Look at the mandates that have not gone away, as you've heard me say before. In the New Covenant, the only thing that went away was the Levitical sacrificial law of the killing and the slaughtering of the goats and the animals, which was a foreshadow to Christ. So when Christ came and he fulfilled that, 
That is the New Testament, is the removing of that old Levitical sacrificial system. What did not disappear was the moral law, the things of right doing, like moving the ancient landmark. If you move someone's landmark, piece of land, that's stealing. Making it bigger on your side and smaller on theirs, that's, a, that's stealing. So all of these things about morality and what to do and what to not, those didn't go away. Only the Levitical law of the, the, the shedding of, of uh, animals' blood. So, this has not gone away, but it's been buried by the devil because he doesn't want us to see God's generosity nor the things that we can claim ourselves in the scriptures. Let's read, as my time is already halfway done. This is what God says about the Jubilee, and I just have to read the first 17 verses so you understand the acceptable year of Adonai, the acceptable year of the Lord. Leviticus 25, verse 1. This is how the Jubilee was counted the rest of the land, which happened every seven years, was counted seven times, which was 49, because the year after that was the Jubilee. So something very powerful and specific happened every seven years, which culminated in, culminated in a Jubilee, but they were both tied together and how the Jubilee was counted. So you have to understand both of them. So let's go ahead and read right into that. But you will see the goodness of God, but also what the scriptures say. Leviticus 25 verse 1. And Adonai spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, meaning the clock doesn't start until you get into the land. It's a different calendar in this situation. The calendar does not start until you get into the land which I give you. The land you shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord six years. This pattern of six and one is also on the year and not just the week of the Sabbath. When you come into the land, regardless of how they got it, giants fell, they, however they, they secured it, the clock would start. Six years you will sow your field. Six years you'll prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, the year, not the day, the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest and land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your field. What grows of its own accord in your harvest, shall not. you shall not reap it, nor gather the grapes of your, of your unattended vine, for it is the year of rest of the land, and the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you, for your male servants, your hired man, your slaves, or your servants, the stranger who dwells with you also, the poor, the destitute, for your livestock, your beasts, and all your land, it, all its produce shall be for food. So, every seven years the land was to rest, and we're going to talk about employment in a second, briefly. I might go over 30 minutes. I'm trying my very best to not be too long-winded. So the land is still today, hasn't gone anywhere, was to be resting every seventh year. And on that year, they were to take a one-year vacation. It didn't say they worked someone else's field. They were just to rest and eat off of the land, all of them including their livestock. This is in the scripture. There's nowhere in here that it says that it's been done away with. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing that went away was the Levitical law. So these are not being uh, benefited from by those who don't understand them or do them. So let's count. So that's how the Jubilee was counted, seven of these, which never stops. This is where history, have you ever heard of employment? Someone says you need to take a sabbatical. 
This is where it came from. A sabbatical was one year. The land was to take a break every seven years with the employees, with the workers. You were not to work. You didn't work anyone else's field. You were just to enjoy the Sabbath year as God enjoyed the seventh day off. And they would enjoy the Sabbath as well on the seventh day. So, now let's get into the Jubilee part. That's just the land resting every seven years. So when we get to the seventh one of those, which equals 49 years, the 50th after, this is what happens. And you shall count seven Sabbaths, here we go, for yourselves, which of years it says, and you shall count seven Sabbath of years for yourself, seven times seven, and the time of seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years. Then you shall call, you shall cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement. So Jubilee would be celebrated on the day of atonement in that year because they kept the holidays and feasts that were biblical, which we are to today. And you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all the land and you shall consecrate the 50th year. This is the Jubilee the 50th year and proclaim liberty you get that the acceptable year of the Lord liberty just like Yeshua was talking about in Luke and you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land of its inhabitants inhabitants it shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family and I'm gonna explain all this I had to do a little study which is good so this will make full sense what that means, people leaving back to their families. The 50th year shall be a jubilee. It Also, you shall neither sow nor reap. So this is a double Sabbath year. The year before was a, was a, a Sabbath to the year, and jubilee is a Sabbath year. When it came to the 50th year, you're taking two years vacation. Off. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your unattended vine. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. Once again, it's a double Sabbath year. In the year of jubilee, each of you, this is the difference. On the every seventh year, this part didn't happen. This part, debts were forgiven. If you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress one another. I'm gonna explain this. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor. And according to the number of years of crops, you, he shall sell to you. According to the multitude of years, you shall increase its price. And according to the fewer number of years, you shall diminish its price. For he sells to you according to the number of the years of the crops. Therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but shall fear your God, for I am your God. Let me explain this to you. This is going to blow your mind, but it's not. I'm just going to explain all this to you right now because I, I, I understand it and understood it as it takes a little more time to figure it out and, and meditate on it and uh, to look, you know, read a little ahead and behind. Back then, and this is going to tell you what's going on today, uh, but back then, employment and being hired did not exist unless your business your estate, your inheritance, which was transferred from family to family, got in trouble. So being hired for someone was not a positive thing. It was a sign that you were struggling and in debt. So let's say that happened and you're struggling, you had a bad weather, something happened and you're in trouble. There is two ways to get out of debt. There was two options. You would sell a piece of your land. That's what he was talking about with the land because it was valued, the land was valued by how many years are there to Jubilee. So if there is 49 years left to Jubilee, the price would be sold higher to get themselves out of debt. And then it would go back as you're gonna see here in a second. If there was 10 years to the Jubilee, the price of the land much, much smaller because it's gonna have to return to the inherited person. So there was two ways to get out of debt. They would sell a piece of their land, which would go back. Hence, everyone goes back to their own estate and lands. But the second way 
which I'll explain what I just said, is they would sell themselves to someone else's estate, to someone else's land, and they would have to work it off. Working for someone else was a sign of slavery, being in debt. God's blueprint of success was to have your own business run your own estate. Selling yourself to work for someone else or selling your land was a sign you were in trouble. But because God made Jubilee was a it was a clause that he never meant for people to have he never meant for debt to be a permanent problem in people's lives to enjoy their lives to enjoy their God to enjoy Elohim to enjoy Yahuwah in their relationship with him so every 50 years however you needed whatever you needed to do to get out of debt from selling your land or selling your time and working on someone's debt the year of Jubilee would release them. Hence, that's why the scripture just said they were free to go back to their estate, to their family, to where they came from. Because land started as an inheritance and it followed and it was never meant to leave the family. And we're also going to find out what God says about it. After we read about the seven year provisions, verse 18. So you shall observe my statutes and my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in the land in safety. This is key. Look at how a lot of crops and things are struggling because they're not honoring God's principles. Neither are we. A lot of people are honoring it in our lives, that rule. Because you know what? Before I get reading more, and this is going to probably go 40 minutes. Believe it or not, that was their employment. That was their employment. Their, in, their land was their income, and that was their employment. Many people are not benefiting and taking that rest of their employment, which true back then was land and employment, but that's where the term sabbatical comes from, taking a one year. And I think maybe, maybe, I'd have to check into this, uh, regular Jews themselves might actually end up taking this. I would have to look into that. But this is here in the scriptures. We're supposed to rest, I believe, along with the land every seven years. So verse 18, So you shall observe my statutes and keep them. The land, then the land will yield its fruit. So when we obey God's these statutes, the land is going to be abundant. There's not going to be a struggle. It's not going to be cursed. Look what's happening in the earth. All the crops are getting cursed. Not only because of the sin that they're doing, but because they've rejected God's word. Remember what the Bible said? My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Verse 20. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in produce, then I will command. So when you honor this and you step out and do it physically, it says, I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year and it will produce enough for three years on the jubilee side not the regular seven cycle sides but when it hits the seventh of the seventh the jubilee a three-year crop was commanded for their obedience because they had two years of sabbath back to back and it's for the third year that they're having to plant again and start over so when there was obedience for the jubilee itself the 50 year there was a three-year blessing commanded on their crops and on their income, which was their crops. And you shall sow in the eighth year. And that's what that third year is for, because they're sowing and starting over. And you shall eat old produce until the ninth year, until its produce comes in and the new harvest comes. All of that, God was the refrigerator. Yahuwah, Yahweh preserved their food for three years straight without going bad. That's the blessing of Adonai. No wonder why we pray for our food, right? <laughs> to make it holy. But, so, listen to this. This is going to tie everything in. Verse 23. The land, it didn't go like this for houses. All houses. But the land shall not be sold permanently 
forever, for the land is mine. Yahuwah says, the earth, get it? It's his, he created it. The earth is his, but houses could be sold, which the earth was underneath. But land is never to be sold permanently, but should stay in the inheritance of the people. For you are strangers and sojourners with me, and in the land of your possession you shall grant redemption of the land. It should never be a permanent sale. Another reason why the lands would come back to the original inheritance. If one of your brother becomes poor and has sold some of his possessions, I'm not going to read all this, but there's a clause, what I was just talking about, verse 23, to 34, that if he becomes poor and has to sell his land, which is an inheritance, family members could actually redeem it for him if they found out about what he was doing, even though he moved forward in the process. They could come behind him and redeem it for him and basically buy the land back for him. But if you didn't have that blessing to get out of debt, you were selling your land or you were selling yourself. And so the way we see employment today is actually set up on how where people were in debt and in trouble and what's happening today. People are in debt and in trouble. It's not the perfect, I'm not saying having a job is evil or bad, but it's not, uh, what, what, what I will say is having your own business, having your own estate, Allowing God to run your time through your own business is the best blueprint as we could see. And we can see the generation the, the generosity of God, which is still valid, is a seven year break. Every seven years for your life, for the farmers that are very few existing. But a seven year break be and the reason why I say generosity, not just because you get to rest, that is generous or, or kind and loving. He was generous that in those days of Jubilee, he would be giving you, like, on the regular seven years, there would still be a double bumper cropper, a bumper crop. On the regular seven years, as they're counting seven, 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 on each seven, instead of a three-year bumper, there would be a two-year so God would bless them. Their income was fruits and vegetables. God would bless their income. Two years so they could take that seventh year off. And three years on the Jubilee. Look at God's abundance. God provides abundantly, exceedingly and abundantly in all that we ask or hope. But my people perish because of lack of knowledge when we don't understand these things, when we don't repent for not knowing these things or doing them, I haven't kept jubilees. This is new to me. Honestly, this slapped me like, boom. I I read this, but what, what was happening didn't really hit me as recently. And God wants us to not only honor his seventh day Sabbath and the week, but also the rest of the land and our lives because our income is not supposed to be what we live for we're supposed to recharge every seven years and just focus on God and family and rest and to be free and so he was using this physical they knew about this they loved this time they loved every seven years and 50 years every seven years rest every 50 years forgiveness of debt they knew about this they love this. So when he used that as an example, they didn't understand he was bridging them from the physical to the spiritual that you need. Mankind has to have a spiritual jubilee to be forgiven and brought back into the family where he originally came from through the shed blood of Yeshua. And they, when they understood that, when they understood that he's saying, I am he, I am the Messiah, because they were living just to fill their carnal, their what they eat, their carnal uh, appetites, what they wear, what they eat, the, the, you know, the, the eyes and the flesh, they didn't have a 
grid, an understanding that they need a savior. And because of that lack of knowledge, it says in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. They tried to perish and destroy their blessing that came to them. And that's what happens, to wrap this all up, only a little over, that's what happens when we don't understand the scriptures and have a spiritual revelation of his word. Just like these people, we will try to throw it over the cliff and kill it and destroy it because we decided not to humble ourselves for revelation and we wanted to be right. When we want to be right and we don't let God be right and speak to us what he's speaking, that's the type of hardness of heart. Well, you will destroy your blessing like they did there and they tried to kill him early but they could not because it was not his time I hope this is a blessing to you and I just I'm gonna take this time now before ending just to speak Jubilee uh, and in all of its fullness and ask God what that looks like in your life because part of this is new to me uh, because technically that was their employment and when they were taking every seven years and 50 years off they weren't working another land so may God have his way of Jubilee in our lives and show us what that looks like in our lands in our lives but I do know what we can claim is Jubilee of where the devil is afflicting us on the spiritual side where the devil is stealing from us and father I just pray right now I speak in decree Jubilee Heavenly Father freedom to break the captives free of those who don't know you and those who do know you father I pray that you would release Jubilee and debt cancellation in people's health and people's finances and people's relationships and people's destiny and all that you're looking to do father I pray that you would send angels to every single person watching this now to set them free and to set them on the right road of recovery and blessing and Jubilee I even speak debt cancellation over every watching this now in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach Amen I pray that was a great blessing uh, to, to you and your family. And uh, it's exciting to see God's word. Please dig in yourself into Leviticus 25, into Luke 4, and just dig into the wonderful treasure that he has for us. Because truly, truly, Yahuwah and Yeshua are truly gracious. They are abundantly generous and uh, compassionate and the most giving out of anything that you could ever encounter in this universe and we could see that right there in the physical Jubilee of what they uh, of the benefits that they had then and we have today so blessings to you and your family until next time may the glory of Yahuwah overshadow you may you keep his times his feasts his goodness and may his blessings of Abraham as we keep his times may the blessings of Abraham fall upon you and your family in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen.